Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here. I make Capture One, Photoshop, and photography videos here on YouTube. And today I want to talk about how to create a Capture One process recipe to run through all of our social media posts in a single click. Now it's not going to be ideal, but the idea here is to kind of stretch your mind and get you to imagine what you can do inside of Capture One using the variables you're given and some of the capabilities inside of the process recipes. Okay, for the sake of demonstration here, we're gonna use this picture of this young lady here. We're gonna call her Sarah. And uh, so I have made a bit of a preparation here in that I have gone into the metadata and I keep my metadata here under the process uh, tab and I keep it down here uh, so I can access it easily. And what I did is I put her name under job identifier. Uh, so that's the only prep I did here. And I'll show you why we do this in a moment. And this is something, if you watch my videos in the past, that I have all my metadata uh, is extremely important to the way that I drive all of my workflow. So the only thing I have to do is put the name of the client into that area. And I do that for the entire set of images right away before I even call. Uh, so let's create a new process recipe here. And we're gonna call it social media. And the goal is, I stated before, is to try and drive all of the social media exports with a single recipe. And now this is not going to work perfectly because we're missing a core name or variable in that in the crop area, you have all these unconstrained 16 by nine, all the ones you've named uh, don't exist. The, the crop name is not a variable we can use. So if it was there and if capture one, if you're watching this video, that would be a wonderful thing to add to the product because then we could drive this recipe using the crops name. Uh, so instead we have to do a bit of work. It's not a huge amount of work, uh, but it is a bit of work and it's not so terrible. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna duplicate it a few times using F8 to create other variants. And what I wanna do is I wanna create different crops. Uh, so this first one here, uh, I'm gonna go again, using metadata to drive all these things. I'm gonna go down into, let's pick category. And I'm simply gonna call this one original. Now for this next one, I would create a crop for Instagram. Now I already have one and that's the one by one square. Uh, but if you wanted to, you could create one that's a different crop for whatever social media platform you'd like. Uh, Instagram uses a one by one. If you're a purist uh, or the uh, eight by 10 antique crop uh, as well. So this is good enough here. And then this one, we're going to do the uh, Facebook cover photo. And what I did is I just went into add aspect ratio and typed in the size here in pixels for what Facebook is looking for and hit name. That's all I did and that created these here. So Facebook cover photo, um, if you touch it with one of these corners, it will suddenly change the aspect ratio of the current crop. And if you get it to an area where you can push it and bend it, you can flip it from vertical to horizontal and so on. Uh, so that's how I'm doing that. You can also right click and then go up here in the ellipses and say apply ratio and it'll switch it to whatever one you're selecting. So you could pick it from here as well, whichever way it all works. So this is a Facebook cover. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to category. I'm gonna call this Facebook cover. And I really only have to do this once because the next time I try and type in here, it's gonna use its type ahead memory and it will remember this. Uh, so that's good there. And this one here, I'm going to call Instagram. And as I said, this one we've already called original. So we can have as many of these as we would like. Now, this is the part where it would be really great if there were a variable called crop name or crop ratio, but there isn't one. So we're just gonna drive it with category. Uh, you'll see what I'm gonna do here. So under social media uh, recipe, let's look at the basic here first. We're gonna export this as a JPEG, of course. And to get the best results on social media, I like to export it a bit on the big side. So I'm gonna go and change the quality to 70 because I don't need it to be amazing. And now the resolution, this is only important if you're printing. It's not really important if you're using it on a monitor, uh, but if you're a purist, you can put 72 in here, but really this is metadata. And then fixed, we're gonna say the long edge here is going to be, let's pick 1800 pixels. Um, and so everything that we pick here will be downsized because Instagram is not going to let an 1800 pixel 
long edge image stand without compressing it at least once. And that's fine. Same with Facebook. Uh, you could even go up to 2400 pixels if you would like here. Uh, so that's good. We're not going to open it with anything. We're going to go into file. And this is where the magic is going to happen. So up here under output naming, I always use sub name and image name. And I never change this because this is global across all recipes. So once you have this set, you kind of want to forget about it and not worry about it. But each recipe will be driven by everything in the process recipe area, obviously. So the root folder is set to the output location, meaning it's going to drop it into here. Well, I don't want it in there. Uh, that's where this image is living. Uh, I want to put it in Dropbox because I want to share this folder, these sizes, with the client ultimately. So what I want to do is I want to change this. So I'm going to go and pick Select Folder. Okay, so I'm going to go into my Dropbox here. I'm going to go to Photography, Client Files, and this is the folder I'm going to drop everything into. Now this is from a previous uh, demonstration I did, so we're not really going to worry about that. We're going to worry about Sarah here, as you're going to see. So I'm going to hit Select Folder. So we're going to drop this process recipe result into client files. And I want to put it in a folder. Now I don't just want to like call it any random thing. Um, I would like to drive this entire process using a variable. And down here we have Sarah under job identifier. Now it could include her last name. You do whatever you want to do here. So I'm going to click this ellipses here. I'm going to go and I'm going to pick job identifier. Now you can uh, Oftentimes type the name of the variable here and it will show you kind of a peak of what's available. That does not work on my system for some odd reason. So uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bother with that. So I'm gonna put job identifier, I'm gonna put a backslash, I'm gonna put social media. And the reason I'm gonna do this is because I may wanna say I wanna share other things with Sarah. For example, I may want to share uh, digital images with her if she's purchased those from me. I want to share obviously social media because she's gonna throw those out there and you know that's advertising so I want to put those and make those available for her and then there may be other things for example I keep my print resolution files also in Dropbox but not in an area that the client sees that's for me uh, so I can always get to those without having to be at home and opening up capture one each time I want to print something so this is going to drop this into job identifier which is currently Sarah social media. But what's cool is by using this variable, it will drop it into whatever folder for whatever client we're currently using. Even if we had 50 clients all highlighted, as long as that job identifier is different, it's going to create or it's going to place these files into that directory. So kind of open your mind here to what we're doing. Even if you think this is a little awkward, kind of grasp where we're going. The beauty behind the system is the goal. I'm going to hit OK. So that's the subfolder inside of the Dropbox it's going to put it into. So now let's work on the subname. So currently, subname is going to be uh, prefixed in front of the image name. That's obviously this global variable here. And we can see right now that there is nothing in front of it. Uh, so if we remember, we under category put the word original or the word Instagram or the word FB cover. So let's go up here and let's actually use category. So again, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go to category. And I'm just going to say, uh, let's say category, and let's put a uh, underscore. Um, although, uh, if you don't rename your files like I do, it's possible that your frame number starts with an, with an underscore. So you may find this to be redundant. Uh, but in my case, I oftentimes rename my file with my uh, other recipes that I drive for my workflow. That's kind of beyond the scope of this. But just understand this, this underscore may or may not be applicable for what you do. So I'm going to hit OK. And now you see that it's going to rename it to FB cover underscore Sarah with mirror underscore and then this file name. And then this one is going to export it as Instagram Sarah. And this one's going to export it as original Sarah. So we have all of these driven with one recipe. So let's process it and see what happens. So I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all three and I'm just going to click on process. If we want to see the result, we can just click on this arrow here, which will show it in Explorer. We can bring this over here and here's Sarah and there's a folder called social media and inside of here we see all three versions with the appropriate file names. So in one recipe we can drive all of our social media exports with a fancy file name uh, simply by creating variants with, a, with different crop ratios. Again we could eliminate a lot of work if Capture One eventually adds the crop name or crop ratio as a variable. Uh, but they currently don't. Now, there are other alternatives in here. As I said, they're not ideal. We have the 
uh, dimensions. So you could have this wild pixel size here if that were handy for you. There's also one under variant position, which put a one, a two, or a three, obviously according to what this number is. So maybe you wanna use something like that. Again, use your creativity to figure out what kind of workflow and naming convention works for you. But the goal here is if we had hypothetically a directory with 50 different clients and 50 different crops for each of those pictures, we could drive this entire thing for exporting to social media for all those clients with one recipe. Click it, walk away, and come back and make sure you share those directories to your client. I have clients I've worked with multiple times and each time we have a new session, then I will drop those files into the Dropbox for them and they automatically receive the notification through that system. And I have this really great communication method with clients. Again, not a lot of work because we wanna automate what we can to make our life easier. So if you like this video and you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll catch everybody later. Thanks again and stay safe.